Nine of Wands. Very defensive energy coming in, guys. Why, though? When you have a lot of creative energy here, why would you get so defensive? We will we'll have a look. We will see where this goes. I'm going to clarify that bottom row in a moment. But let's see what we have to start off with. So you've got two court cards. Court cards, a lot of court cards have been coming up this time. And I think that's, I, I think I said this to other Pisces, Pisces, I think it was, because they got a lot of court cards in their reading as well. When it comes to court cards, I will always read them as your energy, as the energy of the person who is watching the video. But obviously it's general, so it can go both ways. If someone's very central to your story, and we are not just one person. You guys have heard me talk a lot about, if you follow me on Instagram, um, on, about the team. I have an inner team. I never say that I'm an Aquarius. I always say Aquarius. There's an Aquarius part of me inside. There's a Sagittarius part of me. There's a Virgo part of me. All the different aspects that I have, I see them as a team and how they work together. Um, and so with this coming up, th these could be two aspects of yourself. Um, in which case, the Queen of Pentacles, that's Earth energy, right? So that's you guys. Um, she, if she sees value in something, she will make it work. She's very hardworking. She makes everything look easy. She's reliable. She's dependable. You know, she's going to show up every day and put in effort and get it done. She's going to get it done. Um, earth energy, as you guys know, being an earth sign, it's it's slow energy. But of course it is. If you're going to build something, you know, anyone can build castles in the uh, um, castles in the in their heads. They can think of anything quickly. That's a quick energy. That's why the Knight of Swords is very quick. Um, but when it comes to earth, when it's physically building a house, that's going to take time. Right. One brick at a time. You're going to build it solidly. And so that's that's why the King, Queen of Pentacles, they slowly work at it. They dedicate themselves to it. It requires commitment to see this through. Pentacles refer to, um, you know, our physical bodies, our homes, our relationships, our finances, our savings, um, our jobs. It's anything that provides stability and security in our lives. So we have her and yet we have the Knight of Wands coming up here. So whatever you've dedicated yourself to or you work on or the way that you've always done things, that seems to be changing. She's reliable. That's why I was saying that, you know, this is either a match made in heaven or hell. Um, and I don't believe in heaven or hell, just to be clear to everyone. But, um, you know, I mean, it's wonderful in that she, if this this Knight of Wands is going to be inspired, passionate, uh, go in a different direction, go and try new things. Because when we do things slowly and one thing at a time, it, we may not allow room for new ideas to come in. We might just dedicate ourselves to what we're doing and keep going that way. But the Knight of Wands coming up, this is fresh ideas. Let's go try something new. Let's go explore somewhere else. I always think the Knight of Wands, if you gave the Knight of Wands two options, he's going to go with the one that looks totally unfamiliar. Let's go get a new experience. And he doesn't wait around. He sees it. He goes for it. Whereas the thing with the King and Queen of um, Pentacles is they want guarantees. They want to know, well, what am I going to get out of this? What's the, you know, what, what's the outcome going to be? What's the guarantee in this situation? And there are none. He doesn't look for that. They plan ahead. The Knight of Wands does not plan ahead. It's all about how do I feel right now? What am I enjoying about this right now? And if I'm not enjoying it, I'm going to go somewhere else. Let's go pick a different map. Let's go pick a different route. And I don't think the Knight of Wands actually gives a shit about maps. I think he's more, um, this looks, fun. this looks different. Let's go try that very quick. Now that's amazing in that if you take this, adventurous nature and the knight of wands is the adventurer the explorer if you take the adventurous nature of the knight of wands but apply the way that you work out things imagine how successful that could be you're going to try have options that you never thought were possible never thought were possible you're going to go in that direction but the other part of this is you know if she's the one that's winning as it were then that's going to bore the knight of wands it's going to be well i have to do this the knight of wands is not good with that the Knight of Wands is not good with staying in situations that are boring, you know, for the long term good of something. So this doesn't mean drop what you're doing. Let's go do something different. I think it's about keeping what you're doing um, exciting, something that inspires you, that you keep focusing on like changing things up. And I do that. I do that. If you look at these two and it's so strange because I posted this in my Instagram story yesterday. I had a little I showed it was a really fun. It was just a funny little stupid post. And it was about my Virgo moon talking to my Sagittarius, um, but I have Venus and rising there. And that's this energy. And I, what I was saying was my Virgo moon was shocked because I made a mistake on the intro of the first six videos that I posted. And 
my Sagittarius self was like, well, who gives a shit? Like, you know, no one cares. It's so insignificant because the video is around, is about the message, the main message, not about insignificant details. And so this combination can allow us to look at what is important to us, what inspires us, not around the every nitty gritty thing, because these people can get lost in the nitty gritty. It's about what do you find passionate and exciting now? And I'm always changing things up in my channel. You know, I, I always go, I'm 100% present. That's the Knight of Wands, 100% present. So if I'm here, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. That's the Knight of Wands. Whereas she might do things out of duty. So have a look at that. That's the underlying energy of July. And it's going to ask you to look at what are you getting out of this experience? Or, and what are you doing out of a sense of duty? Out of the, you know, and... I'm not saying we don't have a sense of duty. Obviously we do. If you have to, and I don't believe in have to, but if you feel you have to, whatever story you tell about it, that is your truth. I will not argue with you. I will say, yeah, that's the truth. That is your truth because you, you take it as your truth. But whatever you feel like I have to do this, then how could you tweak it? How could you change it? How could you make it more interesting? That's that coming up there. Now, coming up, I'm gonna actually going to go to, um, let's go to the star because that's the foundation here. We have the star. And when the star comes up in the past, and that's last week, last month, last year, this is a time of healing, yes. But I also see this as someone who's gone on faith for a very long time. You know, you've had a dream, a wish, a goal, the hope that comes from a new beginning. So you've looked to this new beginning and it's given you hope and you followed it. You followed the guidance of the star, which is what the star is. I know some people see the star as wish fulfillment. Eventually, yes. But I always see that the star is more about what the wish is, about what the dream is, because we have all these stars in the night sky and you pick the one that's yours, right? That one's mine. And we can look at that star and think, it's so far away, I'm never going to reach it. Some of you have done that. But others of you, it's like, once you've picked what your star is, what your wish is, then you know the steps to take to get there. Then you know the steps to take to, to get there. And that's her. She's very good at that. However... The Knight of Wands is more action oriented, very, let's change directions. And that sounds counterintuitive. Sounds counterintuitive. It might be, well, no, we're building a house. We have to keep building it this way. The Knight of Wands is like, no, let's just take, we'll take the day off. We'll go. And you don't know. And the day off that you take, you might meet someone else, a construction crew or something that can come in and they can help you. They can help you and it'll get done even quicker rather than if you just plugged away at something. So there's, it is going off plan. I kind of see when the Knight of Wands shows up with the Queen of Pentacles. I also want to say this. If this is two people and over here, then with the star coming up here that you thought this was it, you know, whether it's a relationship, a partnership, whatever, however you see it. With the star coming up, you saw it as giving you hope and it helped you to heal. Now healing, yes, sometimes it's, I hear from people saying that I haven't dated because I wanted to heal or I've had time off work to heal or whatever it's been. But I kind of feel where we're going now, the energies of where we are right now, is we are healing on the fly. The healing comes from doing, not from just, the bones are fixed. Now it's time to heal our souls, our spirits. And that happens from taking ourselves back out there, putting ourselves back out there into new situations to see what comes up around that, right? If we've, if we've healed all these old triggers and wounds, time to go collect a few more. And I, just, I say that with tongue in cheek a little bit. But it is about that. What we will notice is they won't affect us as much. We can take on so much more. We can do so much more. But if this is around two people, then one of you is completely committed. The other one may not appear to be as committed. And so you might be questioning at this time that, you know, that this seemed so good. This seemed like my wish come true. But why do we feel on set two different pages? And they, they might be. Not to say they can't work together because they absolutely can. One brings the stability, one brings the inspiration. They can ma marry the two and it can become something more. Now, remember, that's that's earth energy, that's fire energy. And I always say this, the signs do not own the cards. They just lend their characteristics to it. And no surprise to me that we get the star here with, um, it's the card for Aquarius. But I feel like that's more, that's Uranus and Taurus, right? That energy of looking at different things you know, considering different stars, looking at what am I going to do instead? And the star always comes in after the tower in the major arcana. So that tower moment of crashing changes, you know, um, unexplained things just going awry, like things just collapsing or this shocking epiphanies and changes that come in. 
that's what allows us to see these new stars that come up and to pick which is ours. Now, you see the star there and we see the star here. Well, that's not actually a star, that's Venus. But um, if you look at if you look at the Empress here, now with the focus being on the Empress, it's about growth. It's about abundance. And I want to say this to you with that energy coming up. It might sound counterintuitive, but doing things that slow and steady wins the race energy. That's not the best way to grow this or to get abundant. It's the Knight of Wands wouldn't. That's the first card that came out. So that's the key figure here. Um, it's, you know, the Queen of Pentacles was behind the Knight of Wands in the way that I took him out. So that's the key energy of the Knight of Wands, which is trying something new. So with the Empress, we're looking at growth. We're looking at abundance, abundance of all kinds, spiritual abundance, emotional abundance, financial abundance, whatever it is that you want to grow and expand. It takes time. She knows that. But where is the way that you're using your time, what you're nurturing and growing? Is it the best use of that energy? Is it the best use of your attention? Have you ever heard anyone say, you know, I don't have the time, energy or inclination to do that? That's what's coming in. Do you have the time, energy and inclination to do what you're doing? Or do you need to jazz things up a little bit? And that's, I kind of feel that with her. It's what you give your attention to because everything takes time. Everything takes time. There's a season for everything, right? But if, you know, um, I don't know why I'm thinking of gardeners, but, you know, when if you're a gardener, and I don't garden at all. I don't have a green thumb. I have a brown thumb. Everything I touch turns to shit. So I can't grow anything like that. Um, my mother and my grandmother, they're very good. They were very good at growing things, but not me. So, um, but if you think about it, you know, a lot of people that want to grow things outside in the garden and it's still cold in spring, right? They don't want to, it, the frost is still there. But if you have a greenhouse, you can start doing it a little earlier. It depends on the seasons, yes. But how do you work around that? Is there a workaround? That's what the Knight of Wands is kind of showing me in this reading. So we have this. We have a star that's been picked. We have these kind of two energies here, opposing energies almost. And you're using that to grow something. A, a, you know, a new venture, a new relationship, a new project, new job, or even an existing one. But it's about growth at this time. And what, how do, what do we need to grow? Space. We need space to grow. Is it time to go and explore new spaces? And I mean that internally, externally, in whichever way. This is the card of the um, adventurer, right? The explorer. So it can indicate looking. I kind of see that looking for other areas that you could grow into. I like that what the hell happens in the bottom row, Taurus? Because we get into the present. Now this is getting a bit defensive. We're getting a bit defensive here. Why? And I, I swear to you, if it had been a different deck, if it had been the Seven of Wands of the traditional right away, and I'll show you it actually, because I have a retired deck here that I use to give examples of other cards. Because I kind of got that from that when the Seven of Wands showed up especially with that um, eight of wands showing up in the future. Where the hell is it? Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. So if you have a look at the traditional seven of wands, right? And you can see he's defen defensive as well here. But we don't actually see any people. And in most tarot decks, you don't see the people. You only see the wands. And so as much as this is about standing your ground, defending what's yours, you know, is it worth fighting for? That's the question. Is it worth fighting for? It does also ask us, you know, our perception of a threat or of the issues that are coming towards us. Are they real? Are they real? Are these sticks just stuck in the ground or are there people actually holding them and threatening him? You know, it's about understanding, is there a real threat here? How big is the problem that's coming towards us? Is it our perception that it's bigger than it is? Or is it truly as bad as we think it is? Um, and I'm saying that because the Eight of Swords is in the future. But right now, what you're being asked to do is, what do you stand for? What do you stand for? Because even with that kind of defensiveness, especially seven of ones, nine of ones, um, it can be this way, you know, where we have committed so much to something. We've given so much of ourselves, followed the star, tried to build something, dedicated ourselves to something, committed to it. But now we're trying to grow it. And we don't like it, right? We might have to change up what we're doing. So imagine, imagine I've always done my readings this way, recorded them a certain way, rendered them. I have a process. But imagine someone came up to me and said, well, Jay, you know, it might work a little bit better if you did X, Y, and Z. I might not like that. 
because I might be, well, hang on a second, I've been in this this way for two and a half years. It's what I'm comfortable with. My system works like that. Who are you to come and tell me? But that's defensive energy. But I don't believe it. I don't believe in unsolicited advice anyway. But, you know, so it can be that kind of energy with unsolicited advice coming in. But because we've done it a certain way for so long, we don't like that idea. So we can kind of dig our heels in, right? Dig our heels in a little bit and say, no, this is the best way for me. But I kind of feel like you, but this doesn't have to come from anyone else. I feel like this is from you. What are you coming up with? There's something that inspires you. There's something that you're passionate about or someone even, but that's calling to you. But it's so out of the norm. It's so out of the traditional. It's the unknown. It's not the known. She works with knowns that what can I work on? What can I create? Now, it's like I said, this is defensive, but the key thing that you're being asked right now is, is it worth fighting for? Is it worth defending? But what are you defending it from? Why is that even a question? That's what I would say to you. Why is that a question, Taurus, for you? And you might have a good reason. Uh, that's a rhetorical question. I don't need to know the answer, but that's your message. It's asking you, why do you feel like you need to defend this or stand your ground on something? Or, you know, um, it's so cliche to say that Taurus is stubborn. Don't worry. There's loads of debates online over who's the most stubborn, Taurus or Aquarius. So I get that whole stubborn thing. That's fixed signs in general. I don't know how Leo and Scorpio always get out of that debate because they're just as stubborn as well. But I think they low key hide it. But with that here, it's like, why are you digging your heels in? Is it because you've always done it that way? Doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, but it's about owning your reason for it. Why? Why do I feel like I need to defend this? What do I feel is coming for it? What's coming at it? Is the threat real? I mean, they're, they're mer people here. And there's a this scuba diver that's shown up. Now, are they threatening him? He looks like he's threatened. He's got his hands up saying, no, no, like, you know, that, like that. But are they just kind of lighting the way saying, who's this? What's shown up here? What's shown up in our house? Like going to explore it. So it's, there's a, I'm getting a question mark around that. Why? Because this, you might be defending something prematurely based on fears and doubts around your future, around the future growth of something around the abundance that you are working towards or that you see happening here. I will say this also, the Empress is very attractive. Those of you that are trying to date, you know, you might have set your thing that, oh, I want to go date someone or go and do whatever it is that you want to do. Be adventurous, you know, take my lovely Queen of Pentacles self out there in the world to be seen. But, you know, all you're attracting, and I've had that soul destroy. That's why I don't go in dating sites anymore. I vowed a long time ago, it's soul destroying. But that's me, right? Some people love that stuff. They enjoy it. I think if you don't enjoy it, why do it? But you might be attracting people that you don't want to, attention that you don't want to. It can be in business, competition, other people come for you. It happened to me when I first started my channel. People that come in looking like they're your friends, but they have that whole thing of keep your fr uh, friends close, keep your enemies closer. So they're actually trying to uh, sabotage you. So it can be very overwhelming when you're getting that kind of attention because she does. She's very attractive. She gets attention. She attracts in the literal sense, you know, whatever it is that she needs. But it can overwhelm us. And so there might be this sense of, well, if I keep bloody doing this, is that all that's going to come? More stress, more anxiety, more worry. And am I biting off more than I can chew? Because this is where the I can'ts come in. I can't do that. I can't do this. Um, you know, yeah, I can start my business now, but what if it needs more attention in the future? Am I going to be able to do that? Will I have the knowledge for that? You know, it's those kinds of thoughts coming in. Or yeah, this relationship looks good now, but you know, then I really work that much and I really earn that much. Are we going to be able to buy a house in the future? That's her. The Knight of Wands is saying, well, what do we get out of this right now? Why are we defending something immediately already? Have we explored if it really needs defending? And so... This coming up in the future, like I said, is our fears and doubts. It's that mental trap. And there's no talking going on here. So you're not even talking about these fears and doubts because have a look. She's got a stick in her mouth here. So she's, this really shows that she's not talking. She's blindfolded. So she's not seeing the situation clearly. But she has this sense of fear. She has this thing of, you know, of doubts that will I be able to do this? And it's our fears and doubts. And I don't want to say just because they are there for a reason. They try to keep us safe. They try to keep us safe. And I always say that card, that's an overprotective parent. But I'm going to say this for some, and I don't usually go for the mundane literal interpretations, but I am in this one because I kind of see it. Are you, is there an overprotective parent already in this? Or is that overprotective parent you? Are you doing that to someone else? You know, where you're um, 
trying to keep someone safe, but they're not in any real danger or they're well up to standing up to it. Now your advice is another card of defense. We've got this. But the nine of wands, it's about, it's about defending a dream. And I've, I've got a sense that you don't have to have a new dream. Some of you have that already. You'll know that yourself. It's not about defending the dream. What I feel it's about, it's you don't have to give it up. And I kind of feel like you're, you're doing that black and white thing for whoever this is for. Not everyone's going to do that. But the person that I'm speaking to around that energy, I kind of feel it. That you kind of turned it into an either or situation. And it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be an either or situation. And it's like, no, I've put so much work and effort into this. I've built this. I've done this. I've been tenacious. I've had that tenacity to see it through to this. I can't give it up now. No one's asking you to give it up. The Knight of Wands is not asking you to give it up. He's asking you to bring a fresh energy to it, to tweak it, to re-energize this situation. Very resistant energy along that bottom. We've got two card defensive energies. And this person is like, I don't want to see it. Don't want to think it. Can't do it. Why? When we've got the focus is on growth. How does this grow anything? How does this grow anything? Because think about the Seven of Wands. We're dealing with the energy coming in. How can we put our energy out to expand? If all we're doing is defending about, against what's coming in. And some of you feel that. It's not even your choice. Because you are having to deal with issues and problems within this. But think about it. Why would you defend it and stand up for it if all you see in the future is I can't? Or, you know, there's not really anything. You can't even see anything happening there. And so with the Nine of Wands, it's like, let's, you know, let's wrap up this old way of doing things, that old cycle. You don't have to give up the dream. But we can explore it in a different way. You can still, because that's all a dream is. A dream is your heart deciding on how it wants to feel and how it wants to feel. You know, the love that we envision from a relationship, that satisfaction and feeling of success and abundance that we see from a, a, a job or a business or something, or the security that we get from the home. They're all feelings. Your heart isn't actually picking it in one any one way. That is your mind that does that. And your mind is starting to trap you. It might, and that's, that's the case for some of you. You're trying to manifest something, but you've seen it in one way. I want that one person. It has to come through that job with that company. My, it has to be this very business. 